Thank you. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. And if we have any guests, uh, welcome. So, how many of us has ever set a goal in our life? Good. Now, how many of us has ever reached those goals? Good. Now, how many of us have ever reached every single one of those goals? All right, no? <laughs> Some of you have, and most of us, we haven't. I'm excited to be here today, to be in front of you guys, because we're going to have a great day. We're going to have a very fun day, and I hope that you're all excited. My name is John Chan, and I'm excited to be here. I want to share some of the experiences that I have gone through. I want to share my life experiences because I know the things that I will say, they will benefit you. So my topic today, how to set goals when you're at rock bottom. And from what I'm assuming, since you're all here, that you're at least interested in what I'm about to say. But you're probably thinking something right now. You're probably thinking, this man, he looks very handsome. <laughs> he sounds pretty smart, but he also looks a little young. Yes, I know I am handsome. I know I am smart, and I know I'm a little young. But behind my pretty eyes and inside of my soft heart, I have had some struggles. I had been through some hardships that I have learned lessons from. And I wish to share it with all of you today. I was born in Oakland, California, 1992. And I lived in the Bay Area for most of my life. I would say that I had a pretty average childhood. I have one brother, one sister, and at the age of 13, well, my parents, they divorced. And I would consider that pretty average. I'd say that through high school, I made tons of mistakes. And because my family was poor, well, because of that, I couldn't go to a four-year university straight out of high school. Instead, I went to a community college. And what did I do at my community college? Nothing, really. I just took classes because my mom wanted me to. I didn't have any real direction in life. I didn't know what I was going to do. If I had to think of my future, if I had to picture my future in my eyes, well, it was not a very bright picture. Luckily for me, that all changed. My brother, four years ago, four years ago, he decided to give me a book. I was never one for reading. I hated reading, in fact. But for some reason, I decided to read this book. It was about personal finance. It was called The Total Money Makeover by David Ramsey. I read the book. I decided to implement some of the habits that he talked about. And guess what? My financial future, at least in my eyes, it just felt a little brighter. And I thought, wow, if I can just read one book and my habits and my future just felt brighter, what would happen if I de decided to read another book? Well, I did. I picked up a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I read this book, and it absolutely did change my picture of my future. And I thought, wow, this is the power of books. So I decided to read another book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I thought, wow, this area of my life, this picture of my life for my future, it's getting better. 
I'm feeling that I have a brighter picture of my life. So before I knew it, I was reading books. I was reading books left and right. I started to listen to audio tapes. I started to watch seminars online of some of my favorite speakers. And eventually, everything was going great. I thought to myself, wow, is this going to be my future? Am I going to do really good things? Well, I did. I started to make goals and I started to achieve them. And I thought, wow, this is going great. I started to decide that I was going to have a better life, better life than I thought I ever would. I went to college, a four-year university. I transferred. I even financed my own way through school. I set big goals and I achieved them. And life was going good. Life was going great, in fact. So you're wondering, well, John, <laughs> if, life is so, if, if life is doing or, or going so well, what are you standing up here, what are you doing telling us about rock bottom? Well, it's true. Life, four years ago, it was going really well. But about one year ago, well, that's when things started to change. About one year ago, my business that I had started earlier, it failed. And I thought, it's okay, because a lot of successful people, you know, they start businesses and they fail several times before actually ever getting it right. Let's say, for example, Walt Disney. In creating Disneyland, he failed several times. Let's say Colonel Sanders and KFC. He couldn't even sell that recipe for the longest time. And Steve Jobs. When he first started Apple, it was not that great. So I had failed. And I thought, it's okay. I was going to move on. But here is where I made a mistake. And I made one of the biggest mistakes that people can fall in. What happened was that I failed and I didn't get angry. That's right. I didn't get angry. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel frustrated. I didn't even feel mad that I had failed. What did I do instead? Well, I just calmed myself down and I decided, okay, this is the reason why you had failed. It's okay. I calmed myself down and I gave my reasons in a logical way that I could understand. But in other words, I made an excuse. I made an excuse for myself. And this excuse started to infect its way into other areas of my life, into other goals that I had made. So when I made those big goals and I didn't achieve them, for example, I decided, oh, I'm going to lose some weight. For example, I said, oh, I'm going to get that promotion at my job. For example, I said that I was going to buy that house. Well, I couldn't achieve them. And just like before, well, I was able to pull out these excuses from my pocket. Oh, it's okay. I told myself logically, that it's all going to be fine. But that, that is where I made my mistake. That mistake of not caring. The mistake of letting indifference infect my life. When, infect, when indifference infects your life, well, that's where my life started to go for the worse. That's when my my story, my life star story, started to change in a negative way. So how did it all happen? How did it go from four years ago to a great philosophy on life, to a, from a great picture on life, to rock bottom? Well, 
That's how it went. And I didn't know what to do. I had thought to myself, it's okay that this had happened. I had thought to myself, well, you can't help it. My climb toward my future, my climb toward my goals, well, slowly, day by day, week by week, they slowly became a descent to a rock bottom. I had realized that I was not fighting for my future anymore. I had realized that I had given up and I had stopped. Les Brown, one of my <laughs> favorite speakers, he said, once you stop fighting for the things you want in life, the things you don't want will automatically start happening. He said, once you stop fighting for the things you want in life, the things you don't want will automatically start happening. And I stopped fighting. I didn't get angry. I felt indifference. I should have got angry. I should have got mad at myself. I should have been so frustrated at myself. I should have said, do this better. Next time you'll get it better. John, you should never ever let anything get in your way of success. You should not let anybody, especially not yourself, especially not the feeling of indifference. But that's what happened. I hit my rock bottom. And let me tell you, it's not a happy place to be. When you're at your rock bottom, you're stuck there. And you don't really know what to do. I thought to myself, what could I do? And I remembered the quotes, the speeches from my favorite speakers saying to me, when you're at rock bottom, <laughs> when you're at rock bottom, there's nowhere else to go but up. And that, those quotes, those speeches, they helped me. They helped remind me that I had to start fighting for my future that I had to start working toward my goals. So I ask of you today, if you ever find yourself falling from grace, if you ever find yourself falling toward rock bottom, remind yourself that there are no limitations except for the ones that you have for yourself. Can I, got, can I have you guys do a little exercise with me? Can you repeat after me, please? There are no limitations except for the ones you have for yourself. Great. Now, I want you to raise your index finger in the air and now stick it in your ear. Now, repeat after me. There are no limitations except for the ones you make for yourself. Oh, you guys are a great audience. So, why did I do that? Well, of course, I didn't want it to go in through one ear and out the other. So, now, when you're at rock bottom, if you ever get there, just think of that. And now you know it's stuck into your head. There's no limitations except for the ones you make for yourself. These quotes, these speeches, they got me excited. So I decide I'm going to do this. I'm going to fight for my future. Can I ask any of you, who here likes to cook? Who here likes food? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. I absolutely love food. I love to eat. And I remembered that I love to cook too. And that I had stopped doing what I loved. 
Cooking made me motivated. Cooking made me happy. So when I started to fight again, I started to cook for a healthier future. Who here likes to read? Maybe. <laughs> I like to read. And I thought I had stopped reading. So in order to fight for my goals, I needed to read about personal development. I had to read and, and had that, have that, that positive outlook on life that these books were giving to me. So I decided to do that too. Now, how many of us like to exercise? Mm, okay, thanks for the hands. I decided that exercising was something I had to do. Exercising was the thing that would bring my mornings to be more productive. And I thought to myself, if you do the things that you had done before, well then, John, you're going to get out of your rock bottom. And that's what I did. I fought. I fought for my future. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to fight for your future. I want you to fight for your goals. I want you to do what motivates you. I want you to live for your future. I want you to fight against that feeling of indifference. I want you to exercise and energize your body for the rest of your life. And I want you to shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Thank you. Thank you.